Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inspire Us. I want to take a moment here to talk about the world's conflicts and what we're all going through. Not only are prices of everything going up in this world, God, it's just so difficult to make ends meet. People are losing their homes. People are not able to get into the market to buy a home. The rising cost of living is ridiculous. That's just one of the things that we're faced with. The other thing that we're faced with, of course, are the conflicts, the global conflicts. Hamas, who has attacked Israel, and Israel's response. I'm not going to get into the politics of this or side with anyone. Both hands are dirty there, but I'm not going to get into that. We also have the conflict that is going on, the war that's going on between Russia and the Ukraine. There's so much that people worry about these days. It's hard to remain sane and stable in this world. So how do we do it? How do we remain, I guess, intact in this very conflicting world? I think one of the things that we have to remind ourselves is that there are certain things in this world that we can control and certain things that we cannot control. What's happening across the globe is not within our control. What we can control is how we respond to it, how we respond to life. And sometimes that's as easy as turning off the news. I know it's not a solution to the problem, but it certainly helps. It helps for us to disconnect at times and to reconnect with ourselves. If we worry about what's going to happen to the point where it affects our happiness and our overall wellness, that's not an answer. That's not the way to do things. We have to remind ourselves that, hey, I can take care of myself. And yes, I can pray and I can support the people that I love and I care for and the people who are in my thoughts. We can do that. We can we can support them. We can We can think about them and the atrocities that are happening to them on both sides. But we have to really take care of ourselves. I was on a podcast recently and this question was asked of me. It's like, what do we do? How can we get through life without worrying and being so stressed out about everything that's going on? And my answer was, take care of yourself first. It's self-care. Do what you possibly can. We know our limitations, what we can and cannot handle. And I think we have to remind ourselves that we take care of ourselves first. Imagine this. Anyone who's traveled on a plane knows that before takeoff, there is an announcement. (laughs) I've watched some pretty entertaining videos of uh, some assistants uh, in, in the United States on planes. These are the stewardesses or the stewards who are on the plane and they they go through this really comedic presentation on what to do in times of turbulence. However, for most of us, at least here in Canada, we have this recorded announcement that tells us that in the event of turbulence, there will be there will be masks, oxygen masks that will drop from the ceiling and we are told that it's important to put on the mask yourself first and then help those around you. And that message is really true about life, isn't it? We have to take care of ourselves first before we can take care of others. I think we have to remind ourselves that self-care comes first. I need to take care of myself. Is this news hurting me or is it something that I can handle? and that I want to be informed on. That's up to you. You're the judge. Nobody can make the decision about that except yourself. You're the one who has to decide how much of it you can take. So take care of yourself. This also includes preparing yourself for the day mentally and physically. A lot of people start out their days by getting up, throwing themselves in the shower, dreading their day because a lot of people don't like the work they're going to if they're working at all and some people don't have purpose in life but for those who do have jobs 
or whatever the circumstances may be. How about starting your day off with intention? By that I mean start off with a moment of gratitude. This can be anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute as long as you want to make it. Take a moment, take a few moments to be grateful for what you do have. There are several areas of focus in our life. One of them I've already spoken of. Some people focus on the things that they can't control. I recommend that you focus on the things that you can. One of the other areas of focus is on the things that we have. I think it's very important for us to focus on what we have and not on what we don't have. That's so very important. A lot of us, I wish I had this, I wish I had that. One day I'll have this, one day I'll have that. But they forget that they have a lot to be grateful for in this moment. If you woke up this morning, a lot of people didn't. Are you grateful for that? If you have a roof over your head, have you thanked your lucky stars, your God, the universe, or whoever it is that you thank for having that roof? Do you have people who love you? Are you in good physical condition? Whatever it is, people can find things to be grateful for. I've interviewed many people with severe disabilities who are grateful for what they have and they find ways to maximize what it is that they have. They don't focus on their disabilities or what they don't have. They are grateful and they, they share their smiles and their ideas with the world. How great is that? So starting your day off with intention is one of the things that I would highly recommend to each and every one of you. Start off with that gratitude. Next, take a few moments to go into the closet of your mind. The night before we have a big event or before we go to work, many of us will select our clothes, right? We'll decide, okay, well, tomorrow I've got an appointment or I've got work, I need my suit, I need my dress, I need whatever, and I set it aside for the next day so I'm not rushed in the morning. <laughs> that's some people, folks. That's not everybody, but that's some people. So some people will set it aside, but the fact is that they are planning for it. They are planning for their next day. So they take the time to select their clothes and their shoes and whatever it is to look into the forecast for the day. But how many of us, the day that we wake up, how many of us actually step into the closet of our minds and select our attitude for the day? Just as important, if not more important, than the outer clothes that we wear should we not be focusing on our inner selves, what we're going to bring to the day, the choices we make, to start our day off with intention by choosing our attitudes. You see, if you could imagine your mind as this closet, actually a hallway with two closets, one on the left and one on the right. I'm going to use the one on the left as an example first. That closet, the doors are closed and there's a lock on it. And the reason that there's a lock on it is because that's a pretty dark closet. It contains very dark garments of our past, disappointments, losses, times we were made to feel inferior, anger, all that kind of stuff is in that closet. It's the closet of our past, our past aggressions, the things that have happened to us, the things when we were victimized what responsibilities were put on us far too big for our little selves. Whatever is in there, you don't want to open that closet and let it out. You just don't. However, on the other side of the closet, the doors are not locked. You can open the doors to this brilliant closet that holds with it faith, love, servitude, all the good things that you want to cloak yourself with for that. You want to tell yourself that today I am going to be the best version of myself that I possibly can. I am going to wear a cloak, a garment of servitude. I am not going to let this life get me down. I'm going to take control of this day. And if someone pisses me off, I'm not going to let them ruin my day. I'm not going to let them get to me. I'm going to be greater 
than my circumstances. This is so imperative for each and every one of us to do, is to choose that attitude that we take during the day, that we use during the day when times do get tough. Because let's be honest, this world ain't all rainbows and sunshine. It can be a cold and nasty place. And it's really hard at times. And we have to remind ourselves that despite what happens to us, we have a choice on how to respond to what happens to us. That's what matters. So I wanted to remind everyone that yes, there are a lot of conflicts that are going on in this life. There are a lot of things that are going on in this world. And many of these things we cannot control. And my heart goes out to all the innocent victims who are being killed and, and mutilated and destroyed. And I, I, I can't, it just upsets me to think of how evil this world can be. And I have to remind myself that I can pray for those souls and I can offer to do something, but I also have to take care of me. In the same note, I know myself that I have a lot to give and I know what I can give. And what I'm going to ask of you is where are you? How are you doing? Are you checking in with yourself? Are you being kind to yourself? Are you speaking to yourself in a, in a way that supports you and not that puts you down? Guess what? There's so much beauty in this world. And if we only take a few moments to look for that beauty, to take those moments to meditate and to appreciate what we have, it will make a big difference in your world. I'm Paul Nadeau and I hope that this small snippet of encouragement has helped you. Go on out there and live on purpose.